Hello there, freaks and geeks. Welcome to another edition of Up Your Geek Spotlight. I'm your host, Lou Lamar Booker, and today we have a special interview lined up with the incredible filmmaker, Daniel Andre. Daniel is here to discuss his upcoming film, Running On Empty, a quirky romantic comedy that's already generating a lot of buzz. With a fantastic cast featuring Keir Gilchrist, Lucy Hale, and Jim Gaffigan, this film is set to be a must watch. Stay tuned as we dive into Daniel's creative process, the challenges of filmmaking, and what audiences can expect from Running On Empty. You won't want to miss this insightful and entertaining conversation. Let's hear what Daniel Andre had to say about Running On Empty. <laughs> How's it going, Lou? How you doing, Daniel? I'm doing very well, thank you. Welcome to Up Your Geek Spotlight. I'm your host, Lou Lamar Booker. Today, we have a special guest on. We're going to be speaking with filmmaker Daniel Andre, here to talk about his upcoming film, Running On Empty. Uh, Daniel, thank you for joining us today. Uh, how are you feeling as the release date approaches? Well, thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling great. I feel, you know, it, it's been like every film is, is a long, tough, uphill battle. Um, but you know, it, it, it's, it's strange that, you know, we're finally here and, and it's kind of going to go out into the world and I'm excited to, to see what people think. Um, yeah. And I, I hope people enjoy it as much as, as we enjoyed making it. Um, so what inspired you to write and direct running on empty? Is there a personal story, uh, or experience behind it? Yeah, it's, um, it's kind of a combination of, of a multitude of things, but I've kind of come to, come to discover that, you know, combined with, so a few years before I wrote the film, I came across uh, these things called extreme funerals, which you can Google it and yeah. you can find them. And, and they're actually I've a real seen thing. Them, yeah. in, in the film, we call it adventure funerals. But, you yeah. know, there are people who, who, you know, they'll put their loved one on their motorcycle or, you know, doing something else that they love doing yeah. in life. And, um, you know, that always kind of stuck in my head. And it stuck in my head because it's strange in, in our culture in the U.S. how we sort of, we fear death how death is very, you know, kind of um, glossed over, hidden out of view. And then when, when it is in view, it's just as horrible. Like if you've gone to a funeral, you know, and so that brings me to the second thing. When I was, um, when I was 10 years old, my grandfather passed away. And, um, you know, we went to the funeral and the wake, and it was the first time I'd ever been to one. And my mother and I go up to the casket, and my mother, you know, holds his hand for a minute. And, you know, I'm looking at the body going, like, this isn't my grandfather. My grandfather isn't there anymore. And um, I just, I thought it was kind of horrific and, and a little traumatizing. And so, again, we, we have this very taboo at look on death and we hide it out of sight. But then when we bring it into sight, say for funerals, it's kind of just as horrific. And in other cultures and other societies, other religions, they look at death as much more of a celebration of life or funerals. And so that was something that, that always interests me, how, you know, our societies and our religions or whatever really develop the way we, we see things like death. Wow. The, the deep dive into this story is very <laughs> interesting. The character Mortimer seems quite unique. So how did you you develop his character and what made Keir Gilchrist the perfect fit for the role? Yeah, it was, um, it, it's funny. I, um, I don't know exactly where the character came from. I, I think he was like a multitude of people I knew in real life and other characters I've seen in cinema throughout the years. Um, but it was really, you know, playing on this idea of, of what if you have this person who just, this is their living and death is completely normal to them. So much so that it's almost unfazed. You know, Keir was in one of my favorite horror films of, of, of the past, like 20 years. Um, uh, it follows. And and then oh, I, yeah. saw, uh, I saw I Kier in Atypical. And what was funny, it was just like, even though Sam, the character he plays on Atypical, is, is very different from, from Mort, it was just like I, I watched it and I was watching Kier and I was just like, that is Mortimer. Lucky for us, he read the script and he, and he really liked it. Uh, and then, you know, again, it's I, as a writer also, I tend to, I'm less married to the page as I see a lot of right. other directors are because for me, it's all about the creative collaboration. And so I want to be surprised. I want the, the cast to bring 
as much of them to the role or their idea of what the role should be. So a lot of the credit really goes to the cast and them just taking what was on the page and elevating it to the next level. He did an amazing job. He really embodied that uh, character there. So with uh, every film has its unique challenges, of course. Uh, so what was the most challenging part of making Running on Empty? Oh, wow. Um, well, first of all, mo mo making a movie is just one big challenge. And I like to say it's sort of like, you know, you, you climb a mountain just to realize you're at the bottom of another mountain. Um, <laughs> yeah. But overall, I think, you know, once we got into production, I have to say we were super blessed in that, you know, and in, in, aside from this just being, you know, my first uh, writer director, I, I've worked on movies throughout my life, whether it was through acting or producing other films. Right. And so I'm very aware of the fact that things more than not do not go as planned. And, you know, that's kind of what we do as uh, on the producing level, even directing is we're problem solvers. And that's good because there are a lot of problems that always need to be solved. However, I will say on this yeah. particular project, the, the movie gods were looking looking out for us because we we just had one of the smoothest shoots and it literally was like a bunch of creative friends going off to summer camp to like make a movie. And everybody was happy to be there every day and everybody was just as committed as I was. And it was just, it was really a rare and, and beautiful experience, especially for, for the first time through. Uh, so you have an incredible cast here. Uh, you got Lucy Hale, uh, Jim Gaffigan, who uh, killed me in this movie. Um, uh, <laughs> Francesca Eastwood. Uh, how do you go about getting these roles cast? And uh, what was it like working with such a diverse group of actors? Yeah, um, I mean, it really was. Kier was sort of the catalyst of what got the ball rolling. Uh, and when, once he was on board, Lucy, you know, Lucy was a fan of his work and he was a fan of hers. And it just kind of all snowballed after Kier came on board. They all brought like their A game times 10 on this. And, uh, you know, if I would have had it my way, and this is this is why directors uh <laughs> don't we, why they don't <laughs> let us just like run free or else you know it could have been a three yeah. hour movie with all of the great material that you know Jim gave Jay Farrow you yeah. know Keir Reese Reese who's in the film who plays Simon I mean Reese is just such an amazing actor that you know aside from giving me everything that was on the page these guys would give me that plus more and like I said I, I wish I could have included all of it in the film um, but for time pacing and everything else, you know, you have to leave yeah. your stuff behind. But but everybody was just truly, truly amazing. Yeah, there was the the, the scene with uh, Jim talking about the froyo was I, <laughs> it like lost it. <laughs> so so that that actually so a large part of that is, is, is and Jim was very good about um you know we would always get what's on the page and then we you yeah. know they'd kind of do their own thing as well and so much of that the froyo thing actually I think was mostly Jim yeah. that's Jim doing Jim's thing and he's just he's just so amazing and fun to watch that yeah oh man it was good uh so can you share a memorable moment or a funny moment from the set that stands out to you yeah um well one that I think could be fun for people to actually see see in the film is the scene where Reese, Sim, aka Simon, shows up to, to Mortimer's apartment at night looking for his money and he's banging on the door. Yeah. Um, there's there's the part of the scene where Kier's at the door and on the the, the interior of the apartment shot um, while Reese is banging down the door trying to get in the door, he literally broke the frame of the door and the take is in the you movie. So when you yeah. See, the, yeah, that's not post. That, oh, that really? actually, that, that, was, <laughs> that was the wood cracking and the wow. broken uh, drywall falling to the ground wow and you can see Kier looks scared because he actually he probably was. <laughs> yeah but we fixed yeah. we fixed it we fixed their door and everything was just fine after but um oh that's cool yeah, yeah. That's and that cool. was actually my first day with with Reese normally I, I mean you, you might get a little nervous but at the same time I was just like Reese is in it man Reese is in it and uh i was so for me it was super exciting when it happened for i think my producers and everyone else they might have freaked yeah. out a little that bit that was an but. intense scene too and i knew i was like there, i was there's some like desperation here and then you realize after that scene like what happens i'm like oh okay that i was like it seems too like desperate to be really going after this money and yeah. then i realized what was going on i'm like oh okay um <laughs> So, yeah, so Running on Empty is described as this, like, quirky, romantic comedy about celebrating life. So what do you hope audiences take away from this film? I hope that they see and that they think some of the things that, that inspired me to, to sort of tackle these subjects and themes, you know, life and death and why we're all here. And um, what what would we do if we realize what specifically the finite amount of time we had is? Um, and to also make 
maybe just stop and take a break. And, you know, it's funny, we're so busy with life and, you know, our jobs and our car breaks down and this and that and whatever. And then at the end of the day, maybe we might have two minutes to think about why we're all here and the meaning of life. And I really, I truly, I think the meaning of life is life itself. And I think rather than, you know, have like trying to search for it five minutes out of the day is realize this is the reason we're here and in, enjoy it and, and sort right. of, you know, grab it by the, by the whatever and, and, uh, and enjoy it while it lasts. Uh, how do you think the, the mix of comedy and romance and running on empty will resonate with audiences? Yeah, it's, it's weird. I, I haven't, you know, and I try not to think too much about it. You know, it's funny. I, I kind of call it a, you know, half jokingly, like an anti rom com rom com. And I think, you know, once audiences see it, they'll, they'll understand that more. Yeah. I, you know, I mean, we kind of just did our best in that, you know, with a script like this and a story like this, you're, you're always sort of writing a, a thin line between, you know, comedy, dark comedy, romance. And I think at the end of the day, everybody did an excellent job in, in sort of uh, balancing that. All right. Uh, one final thing here. I know that you're sure. uh, already working on your next project, The Last Will. It's a biopic yeah. based on Lowell Tolhurst's memoir. Uh, can you give us a sneak peek into what to expect from that film? Yeah. There, so there's actually, those are two different ones uh, rolled into one. So The Last Will mm -hmm. is kind of a follow-up, like as far as genre and tone, like a dark comedy uh, to the Morton Sherman Oaks film. That one is probably most likely the next one in the pipe. Uh, the other one you mentioned with Lowell Tolhurst is called Cured. Um, and it's based off of yeah. his memoir called Cured, the story of two imaginary boys. And for those who don't know, um, Lowell Tolhurst is one of the founding members of the band The Cure. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I was, I've was i been a fan of them since I was a kid. And uh, I read his memoir and absolutely loved it. And um, we got together and I uh, turned the book into a script and uh, we're still, we're you know, developing it and whatever, but it's, it's just a huge passion passion project of mine um and i can't wait for that one to, to get off the ground thank you daniel for joining us today huge thank you um for giving us an inside look at running on empty uh and this other upcoming film that you have uh running on empty remember this movie hits theaters on august 9th and it will be available in video on demand and digital platforms august 27th so make sure you go and check it out and stay tuned for the official trailer thank you daniel hello there freaks and geeks that wraps up another edition of up your geek spotlight I'm your host, Lou Lamar Booker, and I want to give a huge thanks to Daniel Andre for giving us an inside look at Running On Empty. Remember, this movie hits theaters August 9th and will be on digital and on demand August 27th. So be sure to check it out. If you enjoyed today's interview, be sure to follow us on social media and subscribe to Up Your Geek for more exciting content and interviews from your favorite creators and stars. Until next time, keep your geek flags flying high. If you're watching us on YouTube, stick around for the official trailer. All of your tests have been completed to get your death date. Are you ready for your results? Oh my God, I'm gonna die. It's okay, what does it say? 21,490. <laughs> Nicole, that's almost 60 years from now. What does yours say, babe? 345. Days? That is not ideal. My ex-fiance dropped me like a hot potato. Nicole's body was really hot. I'd love to do her, but you know, I wouldn't because of you, unless you could have watched. Some people are into that. Weirdos. Me and the boys heading to the strip club tonight. There's women everywhere. I'm just saying. Do I start dating again? I'm Mortimer. I am a mortician. You know what, Mr. Addison? That is not your shade. Do you want to film? Romantic. Hey, do you want to get out of here? I've never had sex with a prostitute before. Professional escort. Sorry, with a professional escort. Rita? You did! I didn't do anything to her. Well, you still owe me for Rita's services. But she said it was free. I ain't handed out free samples. This ain't Trader Joe's. I just joined this dating service that matches you with people based on death dates. I'll be doing your video interview. Lasers. So what kind of gal are you looking for? Kind, honest, a little bit boring, maybe. You're gonna die soon? I'm gonna die soon. Let's go on a date. I'd love to hang out with you again. It's gonna be okay, I promise. It's not like I have much time to build a future with someone. So where's my money, man? Got it? 5,000? Don't make me use it. Go on then. I don't even care. I'm gonna die anyway. No!
You better have my money in full by midnight tomorrow. Or he's going to hurt me. Just wish I met you sooner. Better late than never. I've just been so angry, afraid, happy, all at the same time. Have a seat, Mortimer. Relax. When you and Nicole were dating, did you guys ever try pegging? Pegging? What is that? Pegging's when a girl puts on a dildo and bangs. 